Hey guys, Caitlin from Coastal Carolina Living here, and we were super blessed and I was able to harvest a buck this morning on our private lease. Um, so we are going to show you how we like to cool slash age our venison. Um, we do all of our own butchering at home and we both have full-time jobs. So we usually hunt only on the weekends and when we get a deer, we have work the next day. So we generally just spend a couple of days doing it as we can for lack of a better explanation. Um, so we know some people have like walk-in coolers and they store their, their deer in there or they have a garage and an extra fridge and they're able to store their venice in there. We unfortunately do not have either of those things, but we do have this super dope keyser that we built like years ago that we used to brew beer and we would have it in here. But right now we just use it as a storage for when we harvest an animal. So it took some trial and error and we finally came up with a really awesome system. Down here. <laughs> a really awesome system for drying the meat so that it can get super dry, air can circulate around it, it can get cool rapidly, um, and the meat stays absolutely beautiful. So we have a system. We have these shelves from the dollar store. We have some cookie trays, and then we have just like uh, cooling trays, like if you were to make cookies. And so what we do is, I can't reach the bottom, so very simply because of that reason, we put a shelf down on the bottom first. We usually do two, and I don't know if you can see that. But so we've got two of these shelves down here. And then we take a cookie sheet and a cooling rack, and we place um, one hind quarter on a sheet. The, cook, the cooling rack keeps it elevated just off the cookie sheet so the air can circulate all around it and it's not sitting in moisture at any time because that's not great for the meat. So we're going to put this one in here first. So once I get my first one in there, then I'll just slowly start to build a rack. So I'll take the next rack and I just get it with all four legs. And sometimes I gotta kind of squeeze it on there. All four legs on the cookie sheet so it's stable. And then I'll take my next hind quarter and I'll put it on top of that. And then another shell. Another cookie tray and drying rack. And now I'll stack my two front shoulders. And I take my front shoulders and I usually will stack these ones a little bit just because I kind of start to run out of space. Um, I think one of these was kind of shot a little bit, so that one was. So it's like the leaning tower of deer meat. Now we have them stacked good. Everything has room to breathe. Those shoulders are overlapping a little bit, but it should be fine. And then these actually fit perfectly on the rest of our freezer. So we'll stack the last two here. And we can lay all of our back strap and extra kind of cuts of meat out. we cool it. What we do to maintain the temperature of the freezer, because we don't want it to freeze, we just want it to be at like a fridge temperature, we have this Ink Bird um, controller here. So this controller plugs into the outlet and then the freezer plugs into this. This has a thermometer that we then feed into the freezer. We'll set our temperature on this and then it will turn the freezer on and off to maintain a certain temperature. So we usually set it, I think it's like 36 degrees. All right, once you get it plugged in, you'll see the top here is the actual temperature. So it's currently 65 degrees. Our goal set temperature is 37 degrees. So you'll see it's currently cooling. So that just means that the um, 
freezer is turned on and you can hear it running. So this will help control the temperature. And then the other thing we do is we have this little AC fan that you could use to like cool your laptop or things like that. Um, and we just hang this in here, kind of in a corner. And that just will help circulate some of the air to help keep the meat nice and dry. And we'll leave it in there. We'll start working on it probably today or tomorrow, but this allows us time to work on it so we don't have to rush and try and get everything done today. We're super blessed and super thankful to be able to get out there and hunt as much as we want and to be able to harvest animals. It's a huge, huge blessing. Um, and I hope that this gives you some ideas of how you can um, store your own meat. And if you have any ways that you store meat while you're butchering it yourself, let us know. We love tips and tricks.